start recording now. So good morning, my name is Deborah Davis. I am the Regional Director of Minority Business Assistance Center, which is at the African American Chamber of Commerce. This is a technical webinar series that we are having, and it is being facilitated by Influ, Joshua Reed, who is the founder and CEO of Influ. It is a software company, and um, they have a fantastic social media website or software called Influ, and he'll be able to talk to you more about that. So I'm going to um, toss this over to Joshua so he can get started with the uh, webinar today. So thank you so much, Joshua, for facilitating this for the MBAC program. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So this is week, what week is this? Uh, 10, I think? This is week 10. Yeah, week 10. Week 10 of our uh, tech series. And today we're talking about appointment scheduling automation. So let me share my screen. And I think, you know, I like to always give you guys sort of a, a, a scale of one to 10 as far as level of difficulty with 10 being very difficult and zero being um, probably can figure it out, you know, with a couple hours of your time. So I would say this one is probably like around a three or four. Uh, so right now, in order to really schedule a meeting with someone, you, you're sending an email saying, hey, you know, can you send me some dates and times that work best for you? They send you some time. You say, those don't work for me. Can you send me another week? You do it again. And then out of the five days, say, okay, one day works. Now you're trying to coordinate time. So you're like 10 emails in and it's, it's just unnecessary, uh, what we like to call waste. And so what we're going to be discussing today is a more lean process to coordinate a date and time to meet with someone um, digitally. You can do it virtually, you can do it whether it's in person where you can send someone options that syncs with your schedule. Right now there's a couple of different tools out there like I think it's do Doodly or Dooley. Uh, the one I'm gonna be using today is called Canonly. We've been using this platform for a couple of years now and it works quite well. I think it's more mainstream now and a lot of people are familiar with it but may not necessarily be using it. So. I'm going to show you how to integrate it with your emails, but also if you have your website. Now, if we think back in the last 10 weeks, I've taught you how to create a WordPress website from A to Z. I've also taught you how to create a website on Wix, and that coordinates with a bunch of other web development platforms like Squarespace, Weebly. There's a couple other ones out there, and but they all sort of look the same except for WordPress. They all work very much the same. It's a template, you can make the adjustments. So today we're going to be talking about the appointment scheduling because you got your podcast, you have your, uh, what are some other ones we've done, Miss Deborah? We've done Adobe Premiere Pro, we've done Photoshop, we've done Canva, you name it, we probably have covered it. So today is to where you can really seem seamlessly coordinate your meetings as well as for your business and your products or potential tutorials. So this is the agenda. So we're gonna walk through how to use Calendly step by step. Will this take the full hour? Every time I say I may give you a few minutes back, it normally takes the full hour. So uh, because I like to take my time with showing you guys these platforms and also as an opportunity to ask questions. So the topics we're gonna cover is basically how to set up your accounts. Pretty straightforward. You can create a free account, but also but as you know, with the free account, you're sort of limited to the features and the enhancements and widgets that you can use and integrate with. So yeah, create an event or create your own custom calendar. You can also do it if you have team members, you can do more of a round robin. So, um, and I'll show you how we use it on our website as well. How to share your calendar, how to integrate with other calendars and teams. So maybe you want to sync your Calendly calendar with your Outlook. So <laughs> if you have meetings automatically scheduled on Outlook and you sync it with the digital calendar is going to overlay and only show times that are available to the end user. Now how to automate it and then how to integrate with the website. So the how to integrate with the website is if you want to add it to your actual website itself. So you'll see the calendar in the back end of the platform itself, but maybe you want to add that to your website, your Wix, your WordPress, your Weebly, your Squarespace, and allow people to book you through your website. So maybe you're a you know, a salon or, or maybe you're a consultant and you do automatic bookings, it just makes the process so much easier. So a person doesn't have to call you and you have to open up your calendar and go back and forth for time, just make it very straightforward. Now, a couple of different house rules. So number one, interact with the webinar. 
And, you know, I like to jump back and forth between the chat and also the Q&A section. So if I ask questions, let me know how you're feeling. So right now, let me know how you're feeling. I saw Ms. Deborah, she was saying good morning to everybody. So I like the interaction. And again, if you can't stay the entire time, this will be available on demand. So you can always come back and watch it again. Secondly, ask questions. The reason why I say this is because um, this is free for you to attend. And in order to get this information from a practitioner, you know, usually charging thousands of dollars to get access to this information, especially the one we did last week where I walked you through Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. There's a lot of practitioners that make a living off of this and they're quite expensive if they're really good. So the fact that MBAC has paid to make this available to you at no cost, really take advantage of it. And we often do not when we don't have skin in the game, but this is your opportunity to really ask questions. I don't think this one is too difficult, but if we do have some extra time, ask questions about other things. I know a little about a lot and I've acquired it over a, you know, a decade of working in the tech space and in a, uh, owning a software company. So we work in that realm as well. The last but not least, don't be hard on yourself. So if you don't get it now, again, this is on demand. So I'm talking to you that's here now, and I'm talking to you that is watching this at a later time. You can always rewind it, fast forward, speed it up, slow it down. You can learn at your own pace, but be patient and don't be hard on yourself. If you don't get it the first time, keep doing it and eventually you will master it. And again, today's platform is not that difficult to master. Maybe when you get into trying to integrate it with the website and you're dealing with things like source code, which sounds really fancy right now, but when I show you, it's going to be very straightforward and dumbed down so you can get it and explain it to somebody else at a later time. All right, you guys ready to get into it? Let me see the chat area. Let me see the chat. Yes, yes, okay. All right, cool. So I'm going to go to the first slide. And you guys know, I don't like doing a bunch of slides or reading to you. To me, I, that gets a little bit boring. I want to make this interactive. So I'm going to play this quick video for you. And then I'm going to walk you through the platform. And then I'm going to jump over to WordPress and try to integrate it with WordPress. And it works the same exact way on Wix and Weebly. And we've talked about this. So if you were not at the WordPress webinar or the, or the Wix webinar, you can always refer back to it on demand and watch it. But I talked to you in those in those webinars about HTML code, but Canally provides you with the code. You simply have to copy and paste. And I show you in this tutorial, so don't worry. All right. So I'm going to go to this quick video that shows you the features of this platform, and I'll play it. The future of work is changing, but just because scheduling is inescapable doesn't mean it has to be inconvenient. There's a genius way to work better. Calendly brings schedules and people together, making finding a time effortless. Get set up instantly, connecting up to six calendars to automatically check available times. Create simple rules around your availability so your calendar books up the way you want without lifting a finger. Set buffer times, prevent last minute bookings and create customized events. Each event is fully flexible, no matter the type, allowing you to set preferences that grow with your team. When it's time to schedule the meeting, just share your link wherever your business lives, like email, your website, social media, or Slack. It integrates with your most common business apps. So as soon as an invitee selects a time, everything is automatically updated. Calendly helps you make the most out of every touch point, using intuitive workflows to continually build better relationships. Your team will feel empowered to focus on the things that really matter, because the future of work is not just about saving time, but connecting for success. Calendly, easy meetings ahead. Get started with your free trial today. So yeah, and as I shared, there is a free trial, which you're all limited as far as features. So if you want to watch it, to sort of, if you want to sign up for free, and I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Calendly by any means, it's just a platform that I think is it's very affordable. I think it's like 15 bucks a month. It, you know, it adds up if you're adding team members to your 
to your actual plan. But to start out with all the features, I think it's like $10 and then $15. To me, that's a pretty good expense for the simplicity and uh, eliminating the headache of having to go back and forth with somebody trying to get a meeting. And it integrates with Zoom as well. So let's go through, let me just log in. So again, you can sign up for free if you want to. Uh, we have, we're using, you know, all of the features. So we have the, the maxed out level, but let me show you how it integrates in our site. So if you go to info.com, right? So this is our website. And if you click this beacon at the bottom right, you'll see a couple options, right? So it says, how can we help? So you can do a live chat. We've done a webinar on how to set up your live chat. So if you want to figure that out, you can always refer back to on-demand catalog and there's a webinar there for you where I'll walk with you how to set this up on your website. Very straightforward and clean. Then we have the schedule live demo if you want to see our software. So you click schedule live demo and then you will see this calendar pop up, right? So you don't have to call us. You don't have to email us. You can simply go through the entire booking process. It tells you 15 minutes. It has the demo. I mean, it has the agenda. Understand your question requirements. Then show you how Influ can be used to meet your needs, right? And you can set it up to where it only goes so, so far out, right? So I think we have it limited to seven business days. So if that week doesn't work, you can go to the, the next week. And let's say you click Tuesday. It is show, show you the available time slots between, we have our setup between eight and five. Um, so it'll show you the available time slots. So you got 10, you know, 10.30, 11, all up to 12.30. And we set it for increments in 30 minutes. The reason why we did increments of 30 minutes, as you can see, the duration of the meeting is only 15 minutes. So what we've done is we added a 15 minute buffer before and a 15 minute buffer afterwards. The reason why we've done that, because sometimes, you know, we'll do a demo with someone and it goes a little over and that way we can always show up on time. So we're showing 10 and 10 30. If we did a 10, 10, 15, 10 30, then we'll always be like on the chopping block. We don't want to put ourselves in that position. So you can add a buffer. You can open up the buffer even more as well. And uh, yeah, so once you click it, let's say you click 10 o'clock, you hit confirm. Then you can, you see information Tuesday, May 4th, 10 to 10, 15. You can put your, your name, put your details there. You can put your email. And if you have anything that you wanna share with us, you can add that. You can also add guests. If you have a team member that you want to join this meeting with Info as well, you can type the email here. And you can also, we have set up with text reminders. Now, again, depending on what plan you have, we'll determine what features you get access to. So then also determine what plan you have, you can edit the actual branding of the widget itself. So this is our colors. So we can brand it to our colors. The free plan doesn't allow you to do all these customizations, but with the top tier, which I think is $15 a month, to me is, is very well worth the spend to be able to have it fit the brand of your company or whatever brand that you're marketing. And you can also ask more questions. Maybe you wanna ask drop down questions. You want the potential customer or client to provide more information about themselves, about the, their business and why they're connecting with you uh, to set up a meeting. Then you can add those questions and I'll walk you through how to do that as well. So I'm gonna walk you through how to set up this whole process. And then I'm gonna walk you through how to add it to your website and to add it to your email. So once a person puts their information in, hit schedule event, you will get an email that John Doe has scheduled an event with you for in, for Influ demo and Q&A. It will add it to your calendar automatically. It would also send John Doe an email reminder and meeting uh, for them to approve. So once they approve it, add it to the calendar, whether they use a Gmail or use an Outlook, you both will get a notification that this, this demo has been scheduled for you both to approve. If you have the max out features, they will also get a text message saying, hey, this is just a text to remind you that you have a meeting scheduled with Influ on May 4th at 10 to 10 15. They'll also get another reminder out the day of and then an hour before. You can also control how often those notifications go out. You can also set it up, which I think is pretty neat, to where after the meeting is done, you know how it's just good courtesy to send a follow up thank you email you can set this up to automatically send an email, whether it's 30 minutes right after the meeting has concluded, or maybe an hour. 
we like to do an hour because again, sometimes the meeting goes over. So if you get a thank you email while we're still meeting, it kind of won't make sense. And it also gives you time if you have the meeting, it has you time, it gives you time to log in and make some custom adjustments for that particular client in case you discussed them, something or they had a question and you can add it to that thank you email follow up. You can also add a survey, just many different things you could do with it. So I'm gonna walk you through how to get all that set up. And yeah, and, and that's it. And then also it manages your cancellations or rescheduling. So if that end user needs to change the time of the day for whatever reason, they can simply go back into that meeting invite and they see a link that says reschedule or cancel event. And they can click that and it'll take them to the calendar and show the next available time slots. Another important thing I wanna share with you is that maybe you charge for your time. You can also add a paywall. So in order for a user to schedule that time with you, they would have to put their payment information in first and then hit schedule event. And then you will go through the same process. So if you're charging for your time or charging for your services to speak with you for whatever reason, you can manage all that through Calendly. And I believe it connects with PayPal and also Stripe. And I think there's a, other, a couple other payment processors that they connect with, but the ones that are widely known are PayPal and Stripe. And it works very well with that. So yeah. And then that's it. So that's how it looks on the website. That's how we're using it. You can add it many different other ways, which I'll show you in this demo as well. And let's go to the platform itself. So let me close this out. Any questions so far? Oh, just straightforward. You follow me? Remember, I like you to interact. You, you know that keyboard that's right in front of you? Maybe on your smartphone. I think it's touch screen. I haven't seen too many people with Blackberries anymore, but um, you know, those little buttons with letters on it, just hit that, right, with these and, and let me know, is everything good? You ready to proceed? I wanna make sure you follow me. I know it's Wednesday, it's hump day, 11 o'clock. Maybe the coffee hasn't quite kicked in. Are you ready to go? Yes, okay. Okay, I'm just going to speak for everybody because we got to stay on, on task. So let's go ahead and log in. Again, you can sign up for free. Login process. Already got the password saved. Okay, so here's where you can create a multitude of different calendars. So this is where you can do a meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, that's for your personal account, or you can do uh, a round robin. So remember, if you have team members that are connecting for demos, you can add multiple team members to whatever that meeting is. So maybe you wanna go on a round robin. Um, so you know, you, maybe you're favoring one customer service rep on your team, or maybe you're someone that wants to manage it, you know, manage particular meetings with the end user or the client or the customer. So you can create a number of different um, calendars and associate it with the, whoever is on your team, okay? So since I showed you the, no, matter of fact, we're gonna create a new event, okay? So let's create a new one. So once you log in, this is what it looks like. Now they will give you a couple different demo ones, demo accounts that you can build off of. So we're gonna do, let's just hit create. We're going to do event type. So you could do one off meeting or you could do new team. So if you do new team, it's going to create the team down at the bottom. But let's just focus on the foundation. So what we're going to do, and let me turn on my cursor so you can see where my mouse is. Hold on one second. All right, cool. Now you can see where I'm at. So we're going to do new event type. And I'm going to create, since I'm using, I, I put together just this quick demo site, right, that we're going to be building and compiling with. I just did this so you can see how it looks on the actual website itself. And in this today's demo, I'm using WordPress. So you go to Calendly. We're going to do one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to says group, let multiple invitees meet with you at one time. Collective hosting event with another person, let invitees pick a time when you're all available. And that's like very similar. I believe it's doodly, doodly. Let me just, is it do? Oh, it's doodle. Yeah, so that works very much like a doodle. 
which I was, which I believe is free through Gmail. And then round robin, which I just referenced a few minutes ago. So let's do one on one. Okay, let's start with the basics. If you get one on one, everything else is the same, which is additional features. So now we want to create an event name. Okay, let me zoom in just a little bit for you. Let's create an event name. So in back demo. Okay, location. Now this is important because there's a couple options to give you. You can add Zoom. You can allow the user to pick the location. You can do phone calls. So you can do in-person meeting, set an address at the place. Let me zoom in so you can see. Phone call, you can do Google Meet, you can do Zoom, Microsoft Teams, go to meeting, custom, ask invitee uh, to set the location. So during the booking, if you do ask invitee, it'll leave a, a short answer form where they could put the actual location in where they wanna meet. And so when it gets booked and added to your calendar, it will automatically add that particular location. So since I've already had Zoom connected, let's do Zoom. Okay. And here you can describe, you can put your description of that meeting or instructions. So let's do it back. And more instructions here. Is an event link. Now this is important too. You can customize this, but the event link is taken directly from the event name itself. So if you want the event link to be different than the event name, then you can change that right here. You can also change the event color. That's the color is going to appear on uh, your calendar itself. So you know, like, hey, anything that shows up this color is going to be associated with my calendar. So you have everything set. Let's hit next. Now, this is where all the customizations take place, okay? So remember when I showed you the demo on our website, it's showing only seven business days out. Now, you can do as far in the future as you would like to. The reason why we do seven days is because, you know, someone can book with us. If we just opened it up and you book with us 20 days out, nine times out of 10, by the time we get a week out from that meeting, you probably forgot about it or um, or need to change or something just comes up that takes precedence over our meeting. So we limit it to only seven business days out to assure that we're putting our, ourselves in a position to be successful with a potential customer that hasn't met or spoke with us yet. So you could change this out and you can do you can do calendar days, or you can do business days. So since we're doing the inback, let's do business days. Let's drop this down to 10, okay? You can also do within a date range, you know, maybe this particular style of a meeting is for an event and, you know, the event is three weeks out and you only want to allow people to meet with you between today and two and a half weeks out for that week, for that meeting or event that's three weeks out. So it's just for a time span. And definitely into the future, you know, maybe you are jam, jam packed and you just, you know, business is booming and you got customers coming from everywhere and you know they know your brand and not gonna forget about the meeting, you could just open it up and just let that schedule roll. So we're gonna click the 10 business days for this particular demo. Now the duration of the meeting, this is pretty straightforward, you know, 15, 30, 45, 60, or you can do custom. So let's keep it at, yeah, let's keep it at 30 minutes. Use an existing schedule or you can set custom hours. So for this demo, <clears throat> I'm going to set custom hours so I can walk through the features within this particular form. So here in the customs hours, you see right here, it says nine to five. So that's like that standard template that you're working with. So if you just use an existing schedule and you pick this one, this is what's going to happen. Then maybe you only want to limit your availability based on, you know, what you do every single day of the week. So maybe you want to click, let's do here a second. Okay, one to 28, right? So maybe, and this is the 28th, this is on Wednesdays. That's important because when you click it, it says that you wanna edit dates, but you wanna edit all Wednesdays, okay? 
So let's say let's edit all Wednesdays. So every single Wednesday, 10 days out, you only want to allow people to book with you, let's say nine to four, right? And this is going to apply to all Wednesdays. Okay. So if I click next, you're going to see every Wednesday has been changed from nine to five to nine to four. All right. Let's go to Thursday. Okay. Let's do edit all Thursdays. <clears throat> and if you don't want to edit every Thursday, you can just edit this particular date itself, the 29th for, uh, for those particular hours. Okay. So let's click here. Let's do edit all Thursdays. And you know what? I don't want, I'm not available on Thursday. So let's just delete that and hit apply. So now it's going to eliminate people being able to book with you on Thursdays. Fridays is edit all Fridays. I only want to meet on Friday. It's, you know, end of the week. Let's do between, uh, you know, let's do between 10 and three, right? Apply to all Fridays. Okay, and you got Monday and Tuesday. So I'll leave these the same. I think you get the idea now. So now you know how to set your times for that particular day, okay? So now here's what we talked about, the buffer. So it says, want to add time before or after events. And this is that buffer. And it's to give yourself buffer time to prepare or wrap up before or after book calendar events. So again, I like to do that 15 minute buffer. Meetings tend to go over and if you're doing all of this, imagine you want to stay on time. So let's just give ourselves a 15 minute buffer before and after. You can always adjust it to do even more. And you can just select that buffer time from this drop down menu. Let me select this here. It says additional rules for your availability. Okay. Show available start times and increments of 30 minutes. So that's where, you know, maybe you want to show it every 15 minutes, where it'd be 10, 10, 15, 10, 30 or you want every 30 minutes, 10, 10, 30, 11, 11, 30, or maybe every hour, 11, 12, one, two. So let's keep it at 30 minutes. Scheduling conditions, this is important because if you don't have any conditions and it's Friday two o'clock or Friday one o'clock, maybe you wanna eliminate people being able to book with you within an hour because maybe that's not enough time for you to make an adjustment quickly. You could be driving, you say, oh, I don't have any meetings at two o'clock, so, um, but then you're driving and, and if you don't have any parameters, somebody can just book with you whenever they want. And now you're sort of stuck in a position where you're not quite prepared. So you want to have that window to where you can't book with me um, less than four hours before that meeting. So if it's at three, the cutoff time for booking with me would be, uh, um, to be 11. So you can't book anything after 11 for that same day if my meeting stop at three o'clock. And this is where you would make that adjustment, your scheduling conditions. Time zone display, automatic text show times of my invite this time zone. And as you guys know, it will automatically update an outlook so you can keep that check. And if it's a secret event, meaning only people with the link can book with you, then you can select this here, maybe doing a secret party, or maybe you know, you're a consultant and you only meet with certain clients, special clients, and you don't want that to be public then you can uh, make this a secret event. So now let's hit next. So now, you know, pretty much the, the parameters and the build out of that event is done, okay? So now invitee questions. This is, I like this part because this allows you to get more information on the customer or client or someone that is inquiring about your services. So here, obviously we want to know the name, we want to know the email, right? And please show anything that will help prepare for our meeting. You can keep that or you can edit it, just click that pencil and you can edit the text right here. And if you want to make this question required, then you just click this and it will put that little star next to it. So they can't book without answering this question. Or if you want to change the type of question it is or the style of it, so let's hit apply. Now, if you want to add a new question, just simply add new question and click the answer type. Maybe it's one line, maybe it's multiple lines. Maybe it's a radio button, check boxes, phone number. Let's do, let's do radio button. Let's do yes, no, maybe. All right, and then include other, hit apply. Oh, sorry, uh, do you like, I don't know, movies, right, apply. 
Yes, no, maybe other. You can other. I could put it with depends. You know, depends on my mood. So hit save and close. Workflow. That's more an advanced level. So we're not going to focus on workflow right now. I need you guys to get the foundation and the basics. Notifications and cancellation policy. I talked about this because this is where you're setting up your automation, right? So Calendly has taken care of telling an end user when you're available, the dates and the times, and allows them to book. Now, here's where you're setting up to your email confirmations and reminders. So by default, everything is turned off. So if you log into Calendly and you create your calendar, make sure you select notifications and cancellation policies because you may automatically think that this stuff is going to automatically go out, but you have to turn these things on. So you can, you have to turn the email reminders, right? And you could personalize it. And it walks you through how to personalize it. So this, this is very straightforward. So hi, invitee name. And if you want to change variables, the variables is invitee full name. So when they book, they have to put their first and last name in. So this variable you see right here is going to pull that information and fill it into this automatic email that's going to go out. So you can build this out as you see fit, and you can add some more, you can add more variables or more information that is going to automatically be plugged in from the information that the end user is providing. You just click variables and you click this information right here. Okay. So maybe you want to add below the answers to your questions. And you can put those questions right here into one, two, three. But I would just keep it by default. It does pretty good with a standard template. Timing 20 out 24 hours before. Remember, I mentioned you can do a day before, you can add an hour before. It really is up to you. Depends on how often you want to notify that client. Email follow up, you can turn that on and you can personalize that as well. This is what goes out. Thank you for attending event name. So this is called Inback Demo. So to say thank you for attending Inback Demo at 10 a.m. on May 4th. Please respond to this email with any feedback or additional requests. And again, you can adjust how fast that will go out to the end user or to the client. Use a no reply email address. Your invitee will not see your email address and event notifications. This is important. And if you notice, a lot of companies send emails to us, whether it's advertising or updates, and it says no dash reply at whatever the company name.com. And the reason why that's important is because you don't want the user to think that if they respond to this email, they're going to get a reply. Because if they do and they don't get a response, then the automatic assumption is that you're not responsive, the customer service is bad. We sent you an email from a no reply address. So you can also add that. Please do not respond to this email. If you have any questions, contact us directly at, and you can put the email address. This is good customer service. And then you can do text reminders. You could turn this on. Remember in the questions, we ask for the phone number. So if they want text reminders, they have the option to select opt in or opt out. The cancellation policy, this is pretty straightforward, right? So include cancel and reschedule links and notifications. I think this really comes in handy if you're actually charging and you can see collect payments with your walkthrough. So if you're charging for this, this is where this comes into play. You know, use your best judgment with the cancellation policy. If you want to just keep it simple, keep it simple, hit save and close. But if you're charging or whatever business you're in and if they cancel, that really is is really an issue, um, then you want to include that information so the end user knows that, hey, when you book this time, you want to make sure you have to follow up with this if anything changes, because if you don't follow up with this and you pull a no-show, you know, list whatever those repercussions are. Hit save and close. Your confirmation page, this is what shows after the person has booked the calendar. How this comes into play is Maybe if you book a meeting with us, I have a 10% coupon, right? So you can add the information here. Those little, those little, uh, what, what we like to call bait and switch, right? Or uh, just an incentive for booking your time with us. Hey, here's 10%, here's 20%. You can add whatever that information is to your uh, confirmation page. Or after they book a time with you, you can redirect to an external site. And you can put that URL there. The URL is just the web domain, the website name. Okay, so let's keep this save and close. 
And again, remember I mentioned to collect payments, visit integrations page, which is where we're gonna go right after this because I'm gonna show you how to connect your Zoom account. So in order to add Zoom to the location, you have to have connected your Zoom account and we got Zoom right here. Set and close. So now your event type is on. Let's see what it looks like live. Great. So this is me. It says inbound demo, web conference and details. Remember, this is the information that we typed in, right? When we set up the event. And let's click the date. And these are the time slots that I'm available tomorrow. Let's go into next week. These are the time slots I'm available for on Wednesday because it's automatically connecting to my Outlook account. Okay. And let's walk you through how to connect that information. So availability, we're going to click availability. No, I'm sorry, we're going to do integrations first. Now, this is where you're going to sync up with your Zoom. So if you want to integrate this with Zoom or Microsoft Teams, Google Meets, whatever you intend on using for a potential location for your meetings, this is where you're going to connect that information. Okay. So you walk through Zoom when you click Zoom. It's very straightforward. It's going to open up a Zoom pop up. Let's do Google Meet first. And you connect the Google Calendar. What you would do is sign it to your Google account with your email, your password, and then it takes care of the rest. Is that easy? So make sure you know your email and your password. Stripe, the same exact thing. Is going to walk you through connecting to Stripe. So we're not. We don't do payments by way of Calendly. We every, all our payments go through our website directly. But any event that you're charging for meeting setup. You can connect your Stripe account, and anytime somebody books a, a an event with you, and they put their payment information in, you will see that reflect in your Stripe account. Yeah, so everything works the same way. Zapier creating Zaps. This is a webinar in itself, so uh, there's some good content out there. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm pretty pretty proficient in Zapier. We use Zaps as well for our CRM, so um, I think it's a pretty neat platform. It's the whole point of Zap is to integrate two platforms that don't naturally integrate themselves. So let's say for an example, Calendly didn't directly integrate with Zoom, then Zap, you, you can create a Zap to make these two softwares work together. It's pretty cool. And yeah, this is it here, okay? So you have your integrations. There's one other thing I wanna show you and that's where you're doing your calendar connections, okay? If you want this to directly integrate with your calendar, again, I showed you we're using, we use Outlook. So if you want Calendly to show availability based on the parameters you've set in the meetings that are already scheduled on your calendar, then you simply would add a calendar account. It works the same way as integrations. You click add calendar, you put the type of calendar you wanna add, you hit connect, it's gonna take you through, you will log into your Outlook calendar, you put your email, and then it will automatically connect. So it's that simple. These connections and integrations are as simple as you knowing your username and your password for whatever software you're looking to integrate Calendly with. So no extra information, uh, complexity there. Any questions on this piece? I wanna make sure you guys understand the integrations and the connections. Joshua, it's Deborah. What about Outlook plugin? It says for window users only, because I happen to have used Outlook for work. So how would I integrate this? Um, well, let me see. Because this one is not even showing up. Um, I don't know. I mean, you would use out you would use this one here, Office 365. So it's saying 365 outlooklive.com or hotmail calendar. So okay. you would click connect. Yeah, you don't have to worry about this Outlook plugin. This okay. is grayed out, so I'm not too sure about for Windows users. But if you're using Outlook, then you're going to use Office 365 Calendar. We use okay. Outlook. Thank uh, you. Yeah, absolutely. And this exchange, this is an older platform, but um, it works the same exact way. And it shows you Gmail and G Suite. So if you're using a at gmail.com, then you will connect to your Gmail calendar by way of this connect. And then this is if you're using iCloud. I haven't met so many people that use iCloud emails. No knock against Apple, but either see at companyname.com or at Gmail. Very few at MSN or Yahoo or Hotmail. 
I haven't seen anybody use iCloud, but you can connect via iCloud too. So those are the two, that's the gist of creating an event and a calendar and your integrations. Once you connect, once you've connected your calendar, you integrate it with Zoom or Google Meets or Microsoft Teams, that's pretty much all the work you have to do. If you accept the payments, remember you want to integrate with Stripe, okay? And as simple as clicking integrations and click the button here, you create your event and you're ready to go. Now let's go home and let's look at the event that we just created, which is Impact Demo, right? So let's say for an example, you want to, somebody's on LinkedIn and they say, hey, I would like to meet with you for a virtual lunch or a virtual coffee. You're saying, great, I wanna meet with you as well. Hey, I'm sharing a link to my calendar, select the time that works best for you. So what you would do is log into Calendly, click copy link, you send them that link. When they click it, this is what's gonna pop up for them, right? And they select the time and it takes them through the whole process. You know, no more back and forth. Okay. And to me, it's very straightforward on how to use it. Again, it's still a learning curve for some, but if they just follow the prompts, they click the date, they hit the time, confirm, they put the information. Remember, these are the questions that we added, put the information they're asking for and schedule event. That's it. All right. Now let's say for an example, you have a website, you really want to get, you want to step your game up a little bit. You want to add this, you should go back. You want to add, nope, let me do this again. You want to add this to your website. I'm going to show you straightforward. You're going to hit share. Okay. You can also add times email. So this is the link that we're going to send to somebody in LinkedIn or text or whatever. Doesn't matter. Maybe you want to add times to your email. So maybe you don't want this person to be able to book, you know, 10, 11, 12. You only want them, you only want to send them times for fourth and a fifth. So you hit four, right? Hit five, you hit four. I only want to show them this. Okay, then I'm going to add these times. So I only want to show them options on a fourth and a fifth. Maybe I want to add this seven. You can say, hey, you can meet with me on these dates. And you want to add in your email. Hit continue. Okay. What you're going to do is copy times the clipboard. Copy times. Let me create a new email in Outlook. Okay. One second. Slide this over. This is, this is a new email on Outlook. Remember I told you we use Outlook and you're gonna hit paste. That's it. So you can put your message up at the top. Hello, please see availability below. Availability, you know, spell check that. And then that person, so what happens when they receive the email, they can say, okay, I see available on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, you know what, 10 a.m on Wednesday the 5th works great for me. They click that, then it takes them to the booking. Straightforward, it's easy, right? So maybe they're not messaging on LinkedIn, maybe they sent you an email. So that's the way you can do it. You can do it that way. So you wanna take your game to a, a whole nother level. So you got your own custom website, you got your company, and you say, hey, visit my website. You could book a time with me there. Let me show you. We're gonna just go one click over. We're gonna say, I showed you share link, I showed you add times to email and I'm going to do add to website now. So if you want to add it to your website, add the website, right? We're not going to do embed in line. You know what? We're going to do this one. Embed in line because that's going to bring it and I'll show you on WordPress for it to make sense. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add this into a box. So that's just a figure fancy embed in line. We're going to add this into a shape. Okay. Let's go to continue. Now, remember, I told you, depending on what tier you are in this platform will determine what features. So with the free account, you don't, you can't do a custom button color and text color. With the premium account, you can change the branding of everything. You can hide the GDPR banner, hide event type details. You can do all this information, all right? Say you like everything. All you're gonna do, this is HTML code, okay? You're gonna, you can highlight it, Command, I'm on a Mac, Command C, I think PC is Control, I don't remember, I think it's Control C, 
the buttons. I'm gonna map, so I'm gonna hit Command C, or you can just do copy code, right? Copy code, that way you eliminate any errors. You don't add an extra space anywhere. Then you're gonna log into WordPress. So this is not a WordPress demo, but if you go through our webinar, you can see this, the teaching style right now. I like to take you step by step. We take our time. We, we, we break things down so you don't have to go open a dictionary. We don't need to get fancy. I want you guys to leave this webinar at 12 p.m. being able to go to Calendly and create your account and get this all set up without having to go back and say, what did this really mean? So I really walked through, it was a two hour webinar where I really walked through the back of the Word, WordPress and how it works. So I've created a sample page here called Inback Calendar, all right? So let's just do, let's preview it. Let me close out some of this stuff. We're gonna show what it looks like right now. Open link a new tab. So this is what this sample page look, looks like right now, right? So I'm gonna add a calendar right here. I'm add the same calendar that we just created. So what I'm gonna do is hit edit with Elementor, okay? And I'll walk you through this. See where it says drag widget. Remember, this is HTML code. Okay, and if you have any questions, you can always click. It says show how to embed your calendar link across the web, including sites like Wix, Squarespace, and WordPress. You can go through all this long documentation, or I'm going to show you how to do this in 30 seconds. So you go right here. What you're going to do is search for a widget. Okay, see where search widget? Go to HTML, HTML. All right. We're going to take this, click it, drag it. It works just like this on Wix and Squarespace. It's a widget. All right. You see this right here? I click it where it says content, the information. And right here, I'm going to do copy code. Go back to this page and I'm hit paste. Boom. Look at that. It's that simple. Now, let's hit apply. Okay. Let's hit publish. It saves the changes. And now we're going to hit preview changes. So now the calendar is on our website. So you can do this anywhere. Doesn't matter. So if you go to this domain name, you'll be able to book a time with me based on in back demo, which is the calendar that you and I just created in this webinar. So that took maybe, I said 30 seconds, that took maybe like 45. So it works like that on every other platform. As long as you have this fancy looking HTML code, right? as long as you have this information, you can embed this on your website. You just wanna look for a custom HTML widget, drag it and drop it. It works the same way in Wix. And we have a Wix webinar that we've done as well. That was two hours long. It works the same exact way. You're going to drag it, drop it, and then edit it. If for whatever reason you need to change it, you're going to click this little tab right there. And let me see. No, not that one. I'm going to click this one. Hit this pencil. My bad. You see where it says content is loading. If for whatever reason you want to change this calendar, you hit this little pencil there. Okay then you could change that content out. So let's say maybe this calendar is done. You have another calendar, another event, or you have another page. So you created multiple events and depending on what page they're on, it associates the correct calendar with that event. And you paste the HTML code and you're good to go. And that is it. So based on our agenda, I walked you through how to set up your account how to create an event, how to share your calendar, how to integrate with other calendars and teams, how to automate your calendar. And then last but not least, which we just completed, how to integrate this calendar with your website. So I told you, I think on a scale from one to 10, this is right around a three, maybe a four. If you, if you don't work too much with computers at all, or automation, it could be a little bit higher. But again, this is on demand, so you can always come back and watch this video again and keep practicing until you get it yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Ms. Deborah, contact myself, 
we'll make sure we get you on the right track so you can get to automating your calendars and events. And that's it. All right. Well, thank you, Joshua, for facilitating this webinar for us today. And I want to thank everyone who participated and, um, and sharing your time with us. Um, this is being recorded. So as soon as I receive the link from Zoom, I will be sending it out to everyone who participated on the webinar today, as well as individuals who registered but were not able to attend today. So again, my name is Deborah Davis. I'm the Regional Director of the Minority Business Assistance Center at the African American Chamber of Commerce. We provide various services to business owners. So please make sure you um, visit us on our website, which is mbacsensi.com. And I want to thank again Joshua Reed, co-founder founder and CEO of Influ Software um, Development co Software Company. I always get it screwed up, Joshua. I'm working. I got to send you the script. I know. Send me the script. Yeah. <laughs> so he is the, the CEO and founder of Influ. So if you have any inf um, any questions regarding um, the services that his company offers, please reach out to him and he'll be more than happy to share those services with you. So again, thank you so much. Enjoy the day. Stay safe and stay healthy. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.